Okay, we are in Unreal and we are going to build ourselves a really cool black hole shader. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and uh, navigate over to this folder I made called black hole. And I'm going to right click and new material. I'm just going to say M black hole. And let's go ahead and open that up. Um, all right, a couple of things I want to set up here is um, I'm going to go to preview scene settings. I'm going to turn off some stuff here, so I don't want to see the environment at all. And I'm going to actually go ahead and set that to a pretty dark color like this. And I'm going to come down here into the meshes folder, which I've preloaded with an with a, a inverted sphere. And I'm going to use that as my test sphere so I can zoom all the way into it and not be clipping through it or anything like that since the normals are reversed on it. And since most of the shader is going to be set up in the custom node, uh, we're going to drop down a custom node here. I'm just going to call this black hole. And if you want to get rid of this flickering in the viewport, just go to lit and turn off auto exposure. And that'll stop that. So the workflow I'm going to be using to create this is uh, we're going to have some custom code that we paste into this little code block right here. But it's not going to be that much. It's going to be the bare essentials that we need to pass into another function that will code inside of Visual Studio Code. And we're going to be doing this for a couple of reasons. Uh, but Primarily, the first one is just like easiness to debug what we do. In newer versions of Unreal, this custom node got a bunch of features added to it that makes this really easy to set up. And so the, the one in, uh, like in particular that's going to allow us to do it this way is this include file paths here. And if we add this, we can give it a file path name to essentially include a custom shader, which is really powerful because we can just code all of our functions there and then just reference them inside of this code block right here. And the other thing that's really nice is this additional outputs. So if we add to this, we can actually make more pins. So I can call this like out one and out two. And this kind of works like in out syntax. So for instance, what I can do, I could come up here and just be like, all right, return zero, semicolon. And this, this return right here, if I plug this into a missive, it, it will flag an error, obviously, because um, I think I have some blank stuff here that we're not using. Also, I never actually put return zero. So that'll return that. But then I could, before the return node, I can just say out one equals one or out two equals 0 0.5, something like that. Now, if I plug these guys in here, we'll get the values of those returns. So there's a, a one for out one and a 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And this will be good because we can do some, some complex things in the function and have the function return more than one value. And that way we can do our, you know, compositing in the shader graph rather than clutter up the custom node or make a bunch of unnecessary functions. Uh, for something that we can just do easily inside of the material editor. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start setting up the shader file that we can use inside of the black hole code right here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just click include uh, file paths down here. And I'm going to get an error until it can actually detect a file that we want to open that has something inside of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code here. And I'm going to make a new folder. So I'm going to call it black hole. And inside this folder, I'm going to create a new file called blackhole.usf. 
like so. And we're going to have to put something in it for Unreal to actually be able to open it. So let's do a quick test function, like a little hello world. So uh, the function is going to return a float. So that's going to go first. And uh, you know, normally that'll be highlighted. And if it isn't down here, uh, where it says select language, but click plain text, scroll down and then choose HLSL. And that'll give you some nice syntax highlighting that'll help us out. So I'm going to make a new function. It's going to return a float and we're just going to call this function hello world. We're going to delete this a little bit later. And then we're going to have the close parentheses here. And then on a new line, we'll do some closed brackets and I'll just hit enter and Visual Studio will automatically do this nice thing where it uh, kind of like moves it to a new line so I can type my function in here. And I'm just going to say return a value of 1.0. And that's our function there. Don't forget the semicolon at the end. So we're going to go ahead and save that real quick and then come back in here and down where our include file path is if we type engine slash that's going to essentially be a shortcut to the shaders folder in the engine and if you remember that it's just going to be private black hole black hole dot usf so now we should just be able to type private slash black hole slash black hole dot usf hit enter and i'm pretty sure that this error is because there's not a forward slash uh, at the beginning of engine here so we'll do that all right shader compiled found the file so what we're going to do here is uh, i'm just going to say return and i'm going to call that function that we just made and if we double check what that was, it was just called hello world. So I should just be able to say return hello world like this and hit enter. Looks like I spelled world wrong. Hello world. And if we drag the return value in, yeah, we get a value of white. So our function is indeed working and we've got everything kind of set up here. So this is good. This means that we can write functions in this shader file and call them directly in our code block here, which is quite powerful. So the next thing I want to do in Visual Studio is make a, another shader file. And this one is just going to be the one that kind of mirrors what's going to go into our code block over here. So let's just go ahead and create a new one. I'm just going to call this uh, black hole underscore frag dot USF like this. And this is just going to be a container for what things that we actually have to plug in here that aren't functions from that file, just to make things a little bit more easy. Because what we're going to primarily be editing in Visual Studio uh, from here on out. So if I just copied over this over here, and pasted it. Uh, and then we just make sure we select our plain text as HLSL. Now we can work in this text editor. We can get line numbers and, and syntax highlighting and all that stuff. And when we need to update this, we'll just we'll just hit control A to select all the text, hit control C, and then just paste it back in here. I'm going to go ahead and kill the other additional outputs that we had, because I don't need those at the moment. And we're just going to kind of move forward from here.